Welcome everybody to the Open E webinar. Uh, my name is Todd Maxwell and I also have Sam. And Sam, you want to introduce yourself? How are you doing? This is Sam Darabati, and uh, one of the sales reps here. And thanks Sam for joining. Uh, we're going to be talking about understanding the log file and quick troubleshooting techniques. And you know, we'll show this in DSS and V6 uh, and V7, but mainly today is going to be V7, where to download the log file. Uh, I'm going to go over some things like user activity logs, the iSCSI target logs, uh, the sessions and the test out log, and critical errors and drives being pulled, things that happen in failover uh, to secondary due to bad nicks and things of this nature. So I don't like to go with too much on presentations on PowerPoint, so let's go ahead and begin. Uh, here we have our DSS V7 and probably the most important thing is where do you get the logs? Yeah. Um, so what you want to do is go to status, hardware settings, and you want to scroll right on down to where you see logs here. Uh, you do have the log viewer here, but this doesn't bring you uh, all the information that you need. It's more just quicker up time uh, viewers that you could use. So is this where you get the logs when you are putting in a support ticket, let's say? No, actually what you want to do, we prefer, uh, I know in some cases in military sites they can only give us certain information, then they would extrapolate from clicking on the download log file. And remember, this takes time. Mm -hmm. But when you do submit a ticket, we do need logs. I mean, sometimes we can get lucky and tell you exactly where it's at, but the logs provide us everything. Okay. Um, they Right now it's running a lot of commands, and that's why it's going to take a little bit, especially mm -hmm. from the test out log. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be querying um, information from the server, uh, it's collecting all these files, and when we open up the log file, you're mm -hmm. going to see how uh, vast they are and how important they are. Mm -hmm. So this can actually take up to 30 seconds to a minute and a half. As you can see, it's working. So we don't need to sit here and keep on. What I've done is I've collected some logs you know, from cases that we have, and I'm going to present about five logs because this can go on forever. And what okay. the reason why I'm focusing on a lot of this on is going to be based on iSCSI, uh, failover, uh, drives, uh, arrays, RAID arrays that are having our issues with critical errors that basically help that assist the failover. So if the primary has a problem with the controller, uh, the volume, uh, then it will fail over. And then, so we want to be able to look at some of the main things that we see. Here's the first log we're going to talk about. It's about uh, SCSI sessions and targets. And let's go ahead and open it. Now, I'm using a, a Windows uh, WinRAR program. And let's make sure everybody looks like can see it. Looks like we are. Okay, good. All right. So we have a, a condition here is that you can see there's just a plethora of log files. I mean, how it, do you know which one to look at? Well, well, that's what we'll do. So let's say we have a an issue. The first one is typically when we get a support case, mm -hmm. the one of the main logs we look at is the critical errors log. Okay. Uh, this also can be sent to you via email. So whatever, and also in the event viewer in mm -hmm. DSS. So whatever happens, this is being collected and then it emails out. Okay. So I'm going to go take a quick look at it. Um, this is a, it looks like a failover issue. I mean, obviously common sense tells you that there are some issues here. Uh, you have some ping nodes that are down, which is needed for the failover. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like uh, the Ethernet NIC 0, 1, and 2 is down. Uh, there are connection problems. So these are some of the things that we would be looking at and, and what would be the cause of that. Here you can see right here uh, the failover condition is going consistent to destination unknown. Mm -hmm. Um, that could mean that either the volume replication NIC, um, you know, what is happening here, maybe there's bad packets. And so what you want to do is start deducing from that and start working from So you're almost being a detective at this point in time. Mm -hmm. uh, if, we, if we quickly scroll down because it could take literally forever, but here you can see obviously we've got some issues with a ping node. Mm -hmm. uh, you got uh, 10.3.233.313 is down, um, and 11 is down, so there's some issues. Uh, either the network is down, maybe the switch that it's connected to is off. Um, so maybe check for bad packets would be one way to look at it. Uh, so the critical error logs would be one log. Again, you'd probably look start looking at the D message two logs. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the previous D message two logs. So today is 521, right? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe something happened on 520 or uh, several hours before mm -hmm. that can give us some type of indication to hunt the problem down. So here we look, we can see some lot of activity on the iSCSI end. Uh, you, the D message is just pouring out the information. It's trying to get consistent, 
but it's just inconsistent from its partner. So here, is we, there any way you can see that on the GUI itself? The consistency. You can. Um, <clears throat> well, in the GUI, you can see if it's consistent. Let's bring up DSS. Oh, see now it came up and it finally took off with the log file. Uh, here, you can see if it's consistent by going to status tasks. And depending if you're in a active active or active passive, you want to look at the source volume. Mm -hmm. So here it's showing that it's consistent to consistent okay. from right here. Um, where in the logs it showed you know it was cons it was consistent on this end, but destination unknown. So it's, okay. it's not reaching its partner. Mm -hmm. uh, you can view the task from the volumes that are in source mode. So here if we go to configuration, mm -hmm. volume manager. And volume replication and then you'll see that I'm able to view the volume that's in source mm -hmm. okay for that task uh, and but for the destination well obviously the other server will be source mm -hmm. when this is an active active uh, scenario active passive all these would be source or all destination mm -hmm. so now we saw a lot of activity. Let's find out what happened and took place. Here we got a log from 521, uh, 521, and of course things started getting probably adding up to activity. Uh, looks like on the 18th, 19th. Let's take a look back. What maybe something can give us some type of information of what's happening. Same output uh, we see here. So it's definitely uh, looks like. There's some right errors on, on the NIC, so maybe we need to troubleshoot and find out where that NIC problem is. Uh, if we look back here on a few days before, I mean a few hours before, same thing. We're seeing a lot of mm -hmm. uh, disconnections right here. So let's troubleshoot this a little bit further. Um, let's look at the DRBD, which is the volume replication. Mm -hmm. So this is... Uh, where a lot of the configuration, when you set up, if you notice, we looked at the volume replication, what was in uh, source and what was mm -hmm. uh, in destination. Here, you can see some volumes are in secondary mode and some are in our destination or in source or primary and secondary. Okay. And so this information would be tied into here. So all the replication uh, all, all the replication is involved in here for the volume replication. Okay. Um, data replication being a different uh, log in the R sync. Mm -hmm. But here, you know, you're looking at a 10 X network 10.3.235. So we're troubleshooting that NIC that probably could be caused in here. So let's take this further. Uh, if we go into, let's look for the test.log. And what we're looking for is the NICs. And find, you know, there's a lot of information in test log. It would take too long to go over. We're going to go to the IF config section. Um, here you can, this is the, uh, another part of the IF config where you can see the speed of the NICs. Mm -hmm. uh, here you've got a 1 gig E, it's running full. We have seen where they're running 100, and we know that it's a, a, a 1 gig E NIC. Mm -hmm. uh, that could be caused, maybe the, the switch was throttled down, maybe there was a setting that you can do in the console screen that was accidentally set and throttled it down to 10 100. So you can check to see if you have a bad NIC here or not. You can. I um, there's several. One way is, uh, and by the way, this is uh, InfiniBand. Um, here we're seeing that. Let's look at. Here's the InfiniBand. There's the 10.3.235 NIC that is complaining. And if you see anything that's out of normal here, just if you look. And I, when I train, I want people to hunt. If you could see right here, you know the receiving RX means receiving, and then the TX is for transmit. So you could see he's pushing a lot of data uh, and receiving data. So he's got about uh, 330 gig versus the other one at 43 megs. Um, so here, the first thing that catches my eye is this guy right here. Uh, he's dropping packets at an enormous rate uh, for the amount of time that he's been because I verified the time and you can check the uptime on the system. And so that is a lot of packets for being up in, he was up in 45 minutes uh, for this. So maybe if I saw maybe one or two packets for four or five days, no big deal. I wouldn't worry about it. In this case, he had some issues. Um, if I wanted to find out if he had any uh, sessions, uh, maybe, but he will probably most likely be disconnected. So here, if we look for sessions, 
uh, you could see that he's using a VMware environment, uh, EXX5 servers, and he's connected probably to the virtual IP addresses that uh, he assigned for the failover. Mm -hmm. So in the VMware initiator, we could see he has a lot of uh, initiators connected to this one target, this target one. Uh, we have seen cases where they get up to 250. That's a lot. And, of course, you have troubleshooting. He probably has an HA environment, high availability on the VMware. Um, so he has cluster working for him. Okay. So now, where is the problem with the NIC? So we still need to find out because we want to tell the customer where the problem's at. Uh, if we look, keep further back, it looks like nothing here. So we're still not finding. So maybe it was on the 20th. So now we're seeing a lot of activity with the RAID controller, but still the NIC is really the cause from the bad packets. Uh, let's look at one more D message. And we're getting more activity on the Mega SAS controller. And we'll go on the 18th. So then we'll tell the customer at which point he says you might want to check his NIC on ETH11. That was his volume replication NIC mm -hmm. uh, that is causing the connection between the two servers not replicating as it went offline. That's the that's a real importance. If we wanted to find out more information on the target, um, let's go back up here on iSCSI. So this iSCSI directory has all a list of the configuration. He had, was working with target one. If we look at the configuration file on this, here we can see the values, the max birth length, uh, the <clears throat> outstanding ready to transmit mm -hmm. to one. In fact, he should probably set that to eight because that's a recommended value. VMware likes that. Um, these values are okay for VMware. Um, and you could change these. Okay. So typically, you want to change them before you uh, have your initiator connected to them. Uh, we get a lot of questions regarding this because uh, to change them, by the way, you can go into the console screen. This is remote console access. Mm -hmm. um, is this through the PuTTY as well? Or? Yeah, this is through PuTTY. You can enable this right here in Setup, mm -hmm. Administrator Settings, and scroll on down, you'll see Remote Console Access. I see. Uh, so its default port is 22,222, and mm -hmm. of course you got to put a password and confirm it. Mm -hmm. um, and then username is CLI for Command Line Interface. Okay. So if I wanted to, to change this value for these targets, um, you could do so in your go into your putty session or walk up to the server, do Control Alt W, and of course we just give you this message to be careful in these changing these settings, especially if you have initiators running your virtual machines, you really don't want to change. Mm -hmm. And we will prevent you if some of the targets are uh, in a failover. We'll prevent you from making those changes. But, you know, things like you could do your tune to jumble frames config, um, but let's focus on the iSCSI daemon options. And here we go to target options, and now I can change those values right here. And you had the other targets as well that you can change for back, right? Correct. So let's say for his VMware condition, I would see here it's in a cluster running. So I'm going to have to stop the cluster. So you want to do this before mm -hmm. you start your failover condition. Um, the other thing is, is that if, if I'm doing it on, let's say, node A that you see up here, right here where my mouse is pointing, that's node A, I need to do it for node B. Mm -hmm. So they have to match. Okay. Um, also, in Linux systems, you want them to match as well through the iSCSI.com file. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's helpful to know. You were asking, uh, I think before, about the NICs, how to verify on the... Which you, one's bad. Right, which one's bad. Um, let's go look at that. If, you know, if I have a suspect NIC, uh, being in InfiniBand as well, because in InfiniBand we treat it as uh, Ethernet, uh, what you want to do is go to Control-Alt-N, and here you get some information. So let's... This is the network, right? Yeah, this is all the network settings. Uh, this is in the console screen. Um, you won't be able to get this information from the GUI. You will be able to get it here, okay. just like verifying we did with the test.log mm -hmm. in the IF config. Uh, here, if we look on ETH0 here on this 1.220 NIC, I want to go to Info. Mm -hmm. And here, we would be able to see all his drop packets Okay. Okay for the suspect NIC. 
Um, and also to be able to tell if it's you know running at full giggy, if it's duplex, uh, if you're having bad drop packets on the receiving side or the transmit side. Okay. So and of course if you want to get out, you just escape, um, and it takes you back to the main uh, screen. Okay, so let's go back to another set of logs. Uh, what we want to go into, uh, let's go ahead and, by the way, this is the another good log to know is called the user activity log. Mm -hmm. um, this can really help you in case, let's say you're on vacation, mm -hmm. uh, you have an engineer or temp agency, we've seen this happen, uh, where an engineer will make a change, mm -hmm. not tell anyone. Um, here, this it captures all the information that you would click in the GUI. Okay. So this is important uh, in case you need to find the suspect. Maybe somebody made a change without you knowing, and you, we collect this information, and this can help you substantiate an argument more than anything. So it's like a keystroke logger, basically. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we don't uh, collect any information from the console screen, okay. only from the GUI side. Okay. But these compressed dates... Uh, provide information and value that uh, you would normally find, um, you know, from the previous days to do your hunting mm -hmm. and diagnostics. All right, let's go look at another set of logs. Uh, this one was uh, a case where, again, he was in a failover condition. Mm -hmm. um, he did, was asking what happened. So here we see a lot of activity again. You know, again, this was today. So these are cases that are just like today. Okay. Um, so here we got a D message zero that was compressed and D message zero one that something might have happened. Here the last event was on uh, almost a month ago. So obviously something took place, you know, yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but let's not get into that. What we'll first do again, I always stress, start with the critical error logs. This is what our engineers do. If we take a view, look at that. Um, obviously. It's looking like it's going to consistent, consistent, and then unknown. Mm -hmm. So its replication state is unstable. Um, here it's stating that the link 10 is down and 11 is down, and it worries stating that there could be connectivity problems. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, wow. Immediately you see that scrolling on down, looks like on the 19th uh, something happened. That uh, generate here, you see secondary node, this node took over all resources, failover completed, status is now active. Well, that's great. I mean, thank God he had replication because if not, let's say you have a hardware system, air on your, whether it be RAID controller, it would be NICs, mm -hmm. um, you want failover. Exactly. You know, people think that just because you have a RAID controller that that is some type of data redundancy. It is not. And too many times we see these, and when we start investigating, so right now we see a call trace error. Uh, typically when we see these, most of them are related to hardware issues. Uh, there are hundreds and thousands of different types of call trace errors. Mm -hmm. um, here we see watchdogs. That's most uh, addictive to being maybe a NIC issue. Um, and it looks like there's some IRQs that are uh, screaming a little bit with the CPUs, and all of a sudden if we scroll down, uh, we are seeing the replication status start reporting that it has issues. Mm -hmm. So what's the problem? Um, so what we want to do is investigate that. If we go to the dmessage2 log before the compressed dmessage, because it looks like it could have caused between maybe on the 18th, 19th, 20, right in there, we're going to find those dates. Here we're seeing a lot of the you know, split brain issues detected. Uh, this is due to because possibly that NIC could be the volume replication NIC that is the suspect again that we're seeing. Uh, here it's just continuously trying to uh, communicate with his partner and obviously we're getting jiffy errors uh, which were related uh, probably to the call trace. So what we want to do right now is start hunting where the problem is. Again we go back to a date we start backing down from the previous hours and days. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look if it's the same type of D message. Whoa, right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So obviously you see the problem. Exactly. We, yeah. we, we see ETH11 uh, looks like a fake transmit for TX hang detected mm -hmm. with a timeout. Um, and it's just riddled here. It just goes on and on and on. So that's the bad nick. Then, right? That would be the bad nick. Now, 
obviously we don't want to tell the, the customer, well, you just have a bad nick, ETH11, have a nice day. Mm -hmm. um, we want to give them a little bit more details. And this is helpful for them. I sometimes like to go, just because I found the problem, I'd like to know when actually the problem. If this last one was on 5.12, I mean 5.20 of this month, and the last e-message was really on 4.25, I really want to go back to this date, because I really don't think the problem was back then, or he'd be calling us. So let's take a look at it and see if it has any bearing. Just before I go to my next, there's your call, trace errors. That probably generated, caused a lot of problems and resources, and... Uh, there were issues with the NIC, and obviously it started generating. So we would tell the customer, it looks with these call trace errors, that ETH11 uh, actually started to happen uh, yesterday at 520, approximately 2 a.m. in the morning. Um, at which point I want to find out what DRBD is running, because I want to be able to tell them which, what's this NIC being used for. What's ETH11 being used for? So here, I'm looking at a 172, 17.17.1 .17 network that he's using the replication. Um, if I were to investigate further, uh, let's look at his failover. So this would be the virtual IP addresses. Mm -hmm. um, he, and of course, he obviously has a different network address. So here, and this is also for the failover configuration. A lot of engineers want to find out where this is stored. This is where we see the ping nodes. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a secondary, uh, the, the primary node. And, of course, this is uh, also indicating that it's doing uh, NFS. Mm -hmm. You know, if it had iSCSI as well, it would be a 1. So this tells me he's also using uh, V6, not V7, because V7 doesn't have NFS failover. Okay. So let's keep hunting for this guy. Um, Obviously, he has no iSCSI, so he's using NAS. So it confirms that he's using NFS. Uh, obviously, he's got a lot of shares. These are NFS shares. Mm -hmm. uh, if we were to look here, uh, we could view the file and be able to see that he is using NFS. So that file protocol is enabled. Mm -hmm. And what, else, what other information he has here. Okay, so let's go back and try to find out that ETH11 NIC. So what we're going to use is the test out log. Now, the test out log is, is the log that basically when you download the logs, this is the file that takes the longest. And you will see um, he basically, there in this log, you have a lot of information. Uh, you can get a headache yeah. literally by looking at this and your eyes become blurry. But after a while, you get trained to look at it. So we can take a week just training on every little bit of information on this, and we're going to let that go. And one of the main things I'm going to look at is I'm going to find, again, IF config. Here we see it's ETH11. Mm -hmm. uh, speed is a 10 gig E. It's fiber optic. It's full. So it's using a, it's not half duplex. It's full duplex. These are his other NICs. Uh, these are inactive. Uh, you notice there's no IP address on them. There's no data uh, being transmitted um, so could, here. So could you switch over NICs just like that because they're not being used? Or? No, he probably has them turned off. I mean, you can turn off the NICs from, and if you go to Setup mm -hmm. and Network Interfaces, and here you can turn off and on the NIC. Okay, that's um, pretty simple. You can't modify a NIC if it's being used you know, for failover. Mm -hmm. We saw uh, that earlier, didn't we? Right, right. You know, IP ad address is not editable due to because it's either being used as virtual IP address, auxiliary pass, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So, but I can turn it uh, a NIC that is inactive or active and turn it off here. I see. So we're, we're seeing in this log that these are just not on. Mm hmm you know, there's, there's nothing, not even the MTV, MTU values and uh, change. You can't do anything unless you turn it on. Um, here we do have an IP address. Uh, and it looks like uh, it's not sending too much data. It could just be the, the GUI NIC mm -hmm. uh, to be able to get into. Here we're seeing 16 gig of data, so it's a little bit more active. Mm -hmm. um, and here, ETH11. So that would look to be... So we go 17.17, and if you remember on the volume replication, I believe it was 17.1 mm -hmm. to his replicated buddy. So here you can see a lot of data being uh, transmitted, and that is the cause for mm -hmm. his issues. So 
there is a hardware issue that caused the call trace issue mm -hmm. back yesterday at 2 a.m. in the morning. It is related to uh, Ethernet NIC 11. Okay. Um, and uh, this is what's causing your data not to be replicated in sync because of the volume replication. Mm -hmm. And then that way you would point out that to the customer. It's that easy, huh? Well, it takes time to learn logs, but I mean, once you, if you just look at some of the main things we do, you, anyone can pick them out. Um, there's just a plethora of information here that normally the, we also look at the D message too, if we want to find out maybe you need to update your firmware, uh, we would look for the D message log, and, but you could see mm -hmm. how many logs are here. I mean, he obviously has an ADS environment, um, so Active Directory services. Mm -hmm. um, so here we find out information. Um, also, you had Samba logs. Uh, we see the serial number. Uh, this will show the serial number if it's a trial version or whatnot, and also what version is he running. Now, typically, we're able to tell immediately, but sometimes we want to be able to see if it's 32-bit mode or 64-bit mode. Mm -hmm. And why is that important? Well, you know, we want everybody to be up up to the latest version. You know, not always can you just reboot a system. You mm -hmm. need scheduled downtime. You need verification. So sometimes we want to be able to collect all this information. Mm -hmm. So at least we're educated about the case. We're uh, making a uh, accurate, mm -hmm. uh, you know, assessment of what's going on. So the D message log. This is the uh, first part of the D message log. Here's the relative information of the hardware. Um, and I'm going fast because it's just there's so much in here as you can yeah. see. Uh, if I scroll down, I could see that he's, uh, here's his Arica array controller. He's using 1680. I could see the size of the array. Uh, is the right cache enabled? And so forth. So this is really good information to have. Also, uh, sometimes you'll pick up information like the ETH11, uh, the TX hang that we had. You can also pick those up here. Uh, but here, you're able to find out, you know, also the firmware. It had a customer that had a 10 gig E, mm -hmm. uh, Nick. He was uh, running our latest version, but sometimes the m vendors, like I, let's say Intel, comes out with a new update driver, mm -hmm. and yet we've already did the release, so there's no way we'd know. Exactly. And we would give them a small update to update to the latest driver than what they're currently using. So here uh, you see that the 10 gig E, what he's using, and of course you can do, look in the test out log uh, to find out what driver version we are running or you want to know what we're running mm -hmm. and if you wanted the latest one. Um, so that's that's it for this case so we could see that there, there's a lot of information here just for this but again you can go into iSCSI uh, you can go into what's called shares and that's dealing with the NAS. Mm -hmm. um, at the www is more of information about the hardware setup if he had a fiber channel uh, array I mean a, sorry an HBA uh, here there is none or have information here okay. where it be set for target mode or initiator um, and so there's a lot of information here he's got uh, the RAID controllers in there the networks in here mm -hmm. server name a lot of stuff and of course in the setup administrator here you could tell if he's got remote access administrator access obviously I'm not gonna show this because I'd be giving on information yeah. I'm not gonna do that <laughs> all right so let's go on to the um, next log. So here was a case. Um, they were having, again, system instability. What's the first log I would look for? The critical error. Critical error logs, correct. Okay, as you can see, there is a lot of physical devices being inserted at that point in time. Uh, it looks like the... <clears throat> the problem was it looks like some ping nodes went down, mm -hmm. okay, and some drives were being inserted. Now, that normally wouldn't be an issue. He could be having a JBOD, and he's filling up the, the spaces that are in there for the slots that we're adding drives. So we want to be able to get more information. So let's take a look at the D-Message 2. So here we're seeing some activity with iSCSI and SCST. Mm -hmm. um, Nothing vital yet, but let's dig a little deeper and see if there was some inconsistency. Sometimes uh, 
the ray controllers will start acting up. These are all messages from the Mega SAS controller, mm -hmm. so from LSI. And if we scroll down, it's just look. Looks like there's some activity. Could be from those drives or a drive. So in sometimes ray controllers are very difficult for us to diagnose. Mm -hmm. um, usually that's why we ask if to do a rate health check. If we go back again, the most activity I see here, going back, there is none for any D message too. So here I would say that the critical air logs, even to relook at those, go back almost a, over a month ago from what yesterday they submitted for the logs. I see. So here in this case, you know, again, I would look at, uh, obviously, ping nodes were down. Well, maybe there's some bad packets. Uh, here, if we go into the test out log, and again, we'll go look at the IF config. Mm -hmm. So nothing really critical is jumping out on these NICs. Doesn't seem like yeah. it. Yeah. So here, I would say probably have him check the array. All the NICs are performing. Um, being that... These two are the most active, and this guy right here, so 0, 1, and 3, but I'm not seeing any drop packets, so it could be something on their switch, mm -hmm. and possibly some activity of that controller with those drives being inserted, it's reacting too much. That would make sense. Right. Okay, so let's go to another one. Uh, this was a array controller that we had a case come in. And he was having, you know, uh, rate controller issues or he wasn't seeing his volumes properly and mm -hmm. DSS was reacting. Uh, again, what I'm going to do is if I'm seeing the logs, if I don't know what version he's running, just go into the Ancom V. This tells me he's running an older version of our product, DSS V5, uh, which is end of life. So he submitted this for an after hours case. Mm -hmm. um, if we investigate again the critical air logs is the first one we want to go to um, obviously we've got a problem mm -hmm. uh, here it looks like something was happening even on March 18th and there were errors mm -hmm. and someone just ignored them huh? yeah exactly somebody didn't call it and if they only called in one month later what is this machine just idling and no one's paying attention was there email set up on the system again you know we catch a lot of times where engineers don't uh, put in the email information in DSS uh, so they can get alerts to what's going on mm -hmm. so here being that he had called trace errors followed by journal commits and IO errors um, this is related to the array okay. the RAID controller and the array that's built in so and then followed right again uh, there, if he had this, he could have prevented this. Mm -hmm. Error, no system volume found. System services can't work without a system volume. So his volume is offline. Yeah. Um, it's not being presented. You see it screaming and trying to warn you. Mm -hmm. um, this basically put him in a degraded state for his virtual drive zero. Huh. So he's using uh, a RAID controller. I believe this is a Mega RAID. Uh, so you can see the Mega Ray monitor providing this information. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like he tried to do something, and it looks like a duplicate IP address. So we're warning you about that. We're picking that information up. Um, in this case, to tell this customer, uh, looks like he's did a some software raid because he's using MD0, um, and he's taking a bunch of arrays and combining it and using our software raid. So obviously there is a serious problem with this controller and we're trying to provide the information. I wonder what the DMS is too is providing very much information at all uh, because the, it looks like the controller is the main culprit and it's going offline or it's having some instability, you know, and you could start seeing SDA is just going writing beyond end device. That's the typical error that we're going to see on a bad array or something's going terribly wrong. Mm -hmm. So, and again, if you see all the information about the NICs, obviously this is not a NIC problem. This is related to uh, the array controller that the, that's supporting the array. Mm -hmm. So here, in this case, we would tell the customer that uh, please either contact LSI mm -hmm. uh, to get their support um, to find out 
what they can do to re remedy. Maybe it's a, a flaky ray controller. Maybe the call trace, which you know is generating some problem mm -hmm. that uh, your journal commit I/O errors is not presenting the volume. At which point, obviously, you need help, yeah. serious help. At which point, we can help you to a certain point. Then we're going to need their engineers to step in. Uh, we've seen a lot of great success with LSI engineers. Uh, here, if we go back, if you look at the dates, D message, they all 424. So if I usually go back to where the first incident could have caused it, uh, this gives you from the beginning uh, in the first instance. So here, it looks like it's trying to present SDA, mm -hmm. but then uh, you could see that it's having issues. And to find out information more about where SDA is used, uh, or actually his MD0, mm -hmm. if you just go into HD param, which for hard drive um, parameters, this is giving you the information for SDA, SDB. So he's got multiple um, volumes. Now what we're going to do is go VG display, so it's volume group display. And that's really going to be way down here in the um, test out logs here in FDIS. You can see, well, it's using, you know, obviously a USB uh, one megabyte, uh, I mean, one gig uh, USB flash stick. Uh, SDA, you can see it looks like a 16 terabyte volume. Mm -hmm. um, if we look down, he's got many of them here that he's making a volume group. So here we could see that he's created a, a physical volume and of course he's presenting it to it and that's obviously VG, we call it VG0, VG01. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like he lost that one. Um, that other one that was, uh, it's not being presented because that array is having issues. Hmm. Let's go look at one more, one last one. Here's the a case where array controller, and again this is why I'm focusing on these because Replication is so important with what you see and what you were getting here. Obviously, you're seeing issues with a lot of con drives or yeah. RAID controllers, and, and replication is important. And having redundancy, data redundancy, is very important. Mm -hmm. um, here, I could tell that he's running on V7. He's running the latest release. And looks like the it gives me all the information on release date. And right here, I want to look at the critical errors. Now, this is really weird because you're seeing a lot of these happening here, inserted, drive inserted. You know, these are way too many messages to have. Um, here is we're, we're trying to pick up the, the controller. It's trying to reconnect to the drives. It, it looks like it's being inserted all the time. Is there a connectivity issue between the drives or the, the backplane or the cables? Uh, what's causing this fluctuation? Um, Looks like he issued a shutdown command to restart. Um, looks like a lot of problems from this controller standpoint. Again, this is where uh, you want to make sure that your firmwares are up to date. Um, contact the vendor uh, that is either, you know, whatever RAID controller you vendor you're using uh, and also whatever components you have. So here, you just see way too much information coming in from the critical error logs. And again, if, if uh, hopefully he set up his email. Mm -hmm. uh, if he did to be able to see uh, the or to be able to be alerted for that information. Now, here we're in the D message logs, and again you're just going to pick up a lot of information, everything that's in the system. Um, you, from obviously you're seeing USB ports. Obviously we're seeing the Mega RAID controller. Um, here we're seeing the type of RAID controller, so it's a 9271. Mm -hmm. Um, what we're finding out here is that here is uh, SDA, so that would probably, I would assume, that would be his boot media. So he carved out a 2 gigabit volume from his array and made that the first boot order mm -hmm. installed DSS on, That's which is great. smart thing to do. Yeah. yeah, or, you know, a lot of times I do recommend using an SSD drive and dedicating that on Miriam mm -hmm. if you really want to do that. Because if you have problems with your RAID controller, mm -hmm. how is DSS going to be, you know, if you're having to do any uh, diagnostics or tests. So you probably want to look at that. but. A lot of engineers do like to put carve out a two gigabit volume and then install it on their array. Uh, here, I could see that 
SDB, his other volume, uh, or his probably his main volume, volume group uh, VG00, he's got the right cache disabled. Mm -hmm. Now, we recommend to enable it for performance, but uh, if the RAID controller has what's called a BBU, a battery backup unit, well then if that battery backup unit is charging, mm -hmm. it'll go to a right through state, or what you'll see here, right cache is disabled. Um, if we continue, we can see he's got other volumes here. Um, that he's got SDC and of course his B is for his main volume group. Uh, we see that he's using an Intel uh, NIX here. So he's got an Intel 10 gig E. We see the version. So he's running the latest version, which is the latest update in, from Intel. So that's the latest driver. We have a small update for that. Um, so really, other than that, it's coming out clean. It looks like their issue is, again, uh, back to their their controller just bouncing back and forth that you saw. Mm -hmm. So again, here's where we would ask them to contact um, the LSI. vendor or LSI right to be able to follow through and mm -hmm. see what they can diagnose from their logs. Also, the LSI logs are here. Um, LSI is able to, uh, we recommend that you save these and send these to LSI. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see, there's a lot of information. Uh, three, where is an LSI RAID controller? That's where they bundle that in there, Mega RAID is where you can see a lot more logs. So here you want to be able to uh, look into these logs of, well, the LSI or Intel engineers or even Dell is mm -hmm. a, they OEM the LSI. Mm -hmm. So you'll see the Dell logs as well. So you want to give this to those engineers. Mm -hmm. Again, that's all this information is somewhat stored. I mean, we don't provide everything for the LSI Intel Del Rey controller. If you go to hardware RAID, these values are stored here. So let's say the logical drive zero, I can set these values right back. Remember we looked at the cache? Yeah. Okay, it was enabled. Uh, if I write right through, that means it will be disabled. And that's what he had on his other one. But again, he's got some issues with his controller. For those drives to be that active on and on, being inserted, mm -hmm. uh, he's going to have A, a performance issue, uh, B, some instability, and so I would seriously check that. But all the information is here that we collect, and that's the information you want to send to uh, those support engineers from Dell, Intel, mm -hmm. um, or any other vendor that is. Well, that's about it. I hope that was helpful, and hopefully everybody else learned as well. And I want to thank everybody for watching this. And also, I want to let you know that if you go to our main site and www.open-e.com and go to the support, you'll see webcasts and videos. Uh, there is a lot of information here. Uh, the last time we did the logs, and you might want to research those again and review them. I try to go as quick as I can for you all because I know you're busy. But here's one where on. Um, March 12th that uh, I did for the log files, what the logs mean, so there's more definition. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, and search histories, being able to look at certain array controller information and so forth. So uh, I think those are valuable for everybody to, to review if you want to become. Definitely. Of course, you do pay for support. So you can sit back and relax <laughs> yeah. and let us do that, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. All right, we got to go. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.